You are listening to the Keep the Weight Off podcast with Dr. Angela, episode number 52. Welcome to the Keep the Weight Off podcast, where we bust all the dieting myths and discover not just how to lose weight, but more importantly, how to keep it off. We go way beyond the food, and we use science and psychology to give you strategies that work. And now your host, Dr. Angela Zekman. Hey, welcome to this week's podcast, everyone. So glad to have you here with us. How's it going for you, Marshall? Going good. Thanks yeah? for asking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, today um, I have kind of an interesting topic. I wanted to talk about how to recognize all the unconscious negative thinking patterns that are going on in our brain. This is actually like a really big subject. And frankly, I still catch myself all the time. I think I'm like one of the, I like to, you know, I like to wear this little halo around my head and think, oh, I always just think positive thoughts, but no, <laughs> we, I don't. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we don't really realize it, but negative thoughts are actually a big problem for us. And why would I say that? The reason is because our thoughts create our reality. When we think a thought and we think it often enough, our brain actually believes that it's true. And so the thought becomes a belief. And then our brain is going to search high and low for evidence that what we believe to be true is actually true. So this is really, really interesting. I'm going to give you an example. Um, and then, Marcel, maybe you can give us an example from your life if you've recognized it. Um, it happens like this. So, let's say that you have a coworker and you have decided, your brain has told you, based on what you've noticed, that your coworker is lazy. They're not a team player. They're always leaving work for other people to do. They're, uh, they come late and they leave early and they don't do their fair share of the work. So your brain believes that this coworker is lazy. So when you have a belief like this, your brain is going to search for any kind of behavior in this person to demonstrate their laziness. See, look, there she is again, showing up late. See, look, there she is again, leaving work undone. And now I have to clean up the mess. And so this is what our brain is going to show us. The truth is, this person is actually both motivated and lazy because we are all, all of it, but your brain can't see that. Your brain can only see the lazy parts of her because that's what you've trained your brain to look for. And then when this coworker is lazy and leaves work for you, you feel frustrated. And when you feel frustrated all the time, what do you do? You eat or you drink or you ruminate. You need to do something to escape this horrible emotion that you're feeling because of their behavior. This is what your brain's telling you, right? It's all their fault. How can you possibly lose weight when you have this coworker that's causing you so much frustration and anger? Well, we hear these kinds of stories all the time in the clinic, right, Marcel? <laughs> we do. We do. We hear it a lot. And... You know, I, oh, I was, I was going to give you an opportunity to, do, do you recognize yourself in any of this? I have a, another story about well, I was going to go a little bit deep with this because as you were oh. talking about this, I started to think on, um, I'm going to give you an example. This is, it's pretty personal to me. Okay. Okay. Um, it just happened pretty recently. Okay. And, and this is, I'm just telling this because it's how far, you know, negative self-talk can go. Um, ah. so, um, my son, he, mm -hmm. he um, recently had some issues with some depression and I uh -huh. noticed that a lot of what was going on with him was a lot of negative self-talk and it was mm -hmm. taking him to a really really dark place because he believed mm -hmm. it to be true and I kept mm -hmm. telling him it's not true you're telling yourself something that's not yourself something that is absolutely not true mm -hmm. and I, I mean I don't know how many of you have teenagers out there that of course have been living you know in the last couple of years or year and a half with you know that pandemic rules and regulations yeah, it's been of tough. living mm -hmm. yeah and so you know he he graduated from high school this last year and spent about a year and a half in you know isolated as mm -hmm. did 
you know, all the kids in school mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and um, started to tell himself, you know, like what really, what's the point of all of this? And then mm. started kind of turning that inward and mm. became really fearful of, you know, growing up and transitioning, mm. you know, from the, the, the youth to the adult, you know, type of living and mm-hmm. um, comparing himself to other people or what he thought other people's life was like and, um, mm-hmm. and constantly self-judging and self-judging mm-hmm. and self-judging. And, um, like I said, and, and he believed it, mm-hmm. even though, you know, you could tell him that's not true, but when that voice, that negative voice inside your head becomes reality, it can take you into a really dark place. And, mm-hmm. um, and so it's, yeah, so this is a really important subject because it is, you know, it's, it goes far beyond, you know, just weight loss or, mm-hmm. you know, don't eat that donut. Um, mm-hmm. we, you know, we constantly judge ourselves, which, and a lot of us women do that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like your, your nose is too big, you know, your hair is too short, your face yeah. is to this, your body's to that. Yeah. Um, and, uh, which, you know, also sometimes leads to eating disorders, mm-hmm. um, because we listen to that negative self-talk. And so this is a really yeah. important subject. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really interesting because we don't recognize that we're doing this. It's sort of unconscious and we don't really recognize that we have a choice. So none of us knows that we're thinking these things. We just think that this is just the way it is. Right. But then we're actually creating this reality for ourselves because of the thoughts that we're thinking and the things that we tell our brain to focus on. And then we'll end up blaming the circumstances for our struggle. Instead of recognizing that it wasn't the circumstance per se, it was our thoughts and the direction that we gave our brain to be focused in that is what's creating our results. So, um, I want to just presence right away that it takes a lot of courage to be willing to look at this. And we talked last week about doing hard things. This is one of those hard things that it takes courage to look at this. It's not easy to imagine that really I'm creating a reality for myself that I don't like. And I can't really believe that I would do this to myself. But we do. We do it all the time. Right? And so, um, it's so interesting. Now, I've yeah, never had it. very... Oh, sorry. I'm, no, it's I'm fine. Go ahead. To you. I was going to say, and I, and I don't, it's interesting that it's so hard to, um, to, to talk to yourself positively rather mm-hmm. than negative. Ne- being negative comes very natural. I mean, for me at least mm-hmm. and, um, turning that around, it's, it's work. Yeah. And you have to be like really conscious in, of what's going on in your mind because mm-hmm. it is super easy for me to automatically, oh, you didn't do that good enough. Yeah. Or, oh, you could have done better. Well, you know, some of that is our survival brain. Our survival brain, um, the reason that we survived was because we were making constant judgments and constant judgments about ourselves. And and that's what kept us safe. So, you don't want to feel bad about it. Just just recognize it. It's like, whoa, oh, wait a minute. There goes my survival brain. Yeah, sometimes even some patients come into the clinic and they um they do so well and but because you know because you ask them not to get on the scale right mm-hmm. and so they really have no idea you know like how well they've done but they mm-hmm. come into the clinic automatically um thinking that they didn't do good enough yeah without even knowing first you know mm-hmm. and they they immediately start to get defensive or start to um make excuses you know of, mm-hmm. well you know i had this this struggle that struggle and then they um, then they get on the scale and they did really, really well. And it's mm-hmm. shocking to them because mm-hmm. they're so used to putting such high standards on themselves that they automatically think they failed. They automatically didn't do good enough. And, yeah. um, and yeah, and it's, it's just interesting how, how we just do that so easily. We do. <laughs> but we wouldn't do it to other people. Like, you know, you wouldn't do that to your best friend. No, you know, you're all, you know, like you want you give your friend support if they, you know, if they don't do so well at, at something and they talk to you about it, you know, but at least I do. I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. no, it's, you're good, you know, and you try to give them support and, you know, mm-hmm. and comfort and love. 
And yet, we have a hard time doing that with ourselves. I know. <laughs> I, I notice a lot of negative thinking in myself. And it was interesting, you know, because um, I've never had an issue with a lazy coworker, but but I was coaching one of our students in the membership the other day. And frankly, I could have been talking to myself when I was talking to her. She was telling me about all the things she had to do, all the things she wanted to do, all the things she had to do. And she said she felt completely ineffective at getting any of it done. And it's so interesting because I feel that I feel that way a lot myself. It's this feeling of just like being constantly overwhelmed and ineffective. It's a really awful feeling to have. So here I am judging myself, right? Just like what you were talking about. So mm -hmm. remember that our thoughts create our feelings. And so what we did was we traced her thoughts back to the root thought. Now, we all have a lot of thoughts. We have like 60,000 thoughts a day. And this is where a coach can really help you to look objectively at your own brain to figure out what exactly is this brain of yours thinking. And when we traced her thoughts back, her root thought was, I can't seem to get organized. And her brain was constantly thinking this thought, I can't seem to get organized. I can't seem to get organized. And you know, I have to be really honest here because I think this thought a lot. Like, I consider myself to be a pretty positive person, but when we're not getting the results we want, you can bet there's some sort of unconscious negative thought pattern that's in the way. And for her and for me, it's this thought that I just can't seem to get organized. I can't, no matter what I do, I can't get organized. So, we think this thought and without even realizing it, and we give our brains the instructions Go find all the ways that show that I can't seem to get organized. <laughs> oh, look, there's a stack of papers on that desk. See, I can't get organized. Oh, wait, I missed another yoga class. See, I can't get organized. Or look, I just got a past due notice on that bill. See, I can't seem to get organized. And on and on and on it goes. And your brain is not going to show you all the times that you were organized, all the times that you got to an appointment on time, all the bills that you did pay on time, all the projects that you got done at work. It's only going to show you all the ways that you can't seem to get organized. Well, isn't that interesting how our brain does this? <laughs> yeah, it's, this is a really, really deep subject. I mean, like, yeah. uh, you know, I was, I, I just started counseling and I'll put it out there. I just started counseling just <laughs> specifically for this type of issue is, is trying yeah. to get past the uh, negative self-talk and yeah. Um, kind of dig deeper and figure out, you know, where it comes from. Yeah. And uh, learn how to, because I mean, I, I mean, I know I do it, but I don't necessarily know why. Right. And um, I've struggled with it. And, you know, also, you know, to just follow up on this. Um, so my son started counseling for, for that same thing. And mm -hmm. um, he said, you know, he's had to do some work just to even recognize what was yeah. going on. Cause you know, he's, he's still youngster and, um, well, if his That's brain is saying, I'm not good it. enough, if his brain yeah. is telling him, I'm not good enough, he's going to look for all the ways to show, to prove That's that exactly to himself. Right. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. So, um, so we're, so we're doing some deeper work and, you know, cause we're trying to figure out uh, yeah. where it comes from, how mm -hmm. we can change it. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, it's interesting because you can watch your brain do this. Um, you can watch other people's brains doing this on social media all the time. <laughs> so Yeah, it's so funny too, because if you were to do that to somebody, it's like how I talk to myself. If I was to talk to somebody else like that, like one of my friends, yeah, I, I would be the biggest jerk. Yeah. You know, people would think I was such a jerk because you just don't treat someone else like that. And you don't talk to somebody else like that. But I don't have a single problem talking to myself like that every yeah. day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And well, and then, you know, like if you're on social media and you, um, what will happen on social media is your brain is looking for evidence to prove itself right. And then the social media algorithms will notice what you focus on and they're only going to show you posts or ads that agree with the things that you've already shown interest in. So... Like social media algorithms are like these um, these filters as well that will just filter out out of all the possible things that they can show you. They're just going to show you those things that that you have told it that you're interested in seeing. 
So Mm -hmm. it's very, very interesting. Um, I think that awareness of how your brain works is going to reap huge benefits. So if you're experiencing things in your life that you don't want to experience, it might help to see what you can do to discover the root thought, the instructions that you're giving your brain as it filters through all the possible things that there are to show you in the world. What are you training it to focus on? Okay. Now, one thing I have to say here is that as you start thinking about this and noticing these thought patterns, it's really, really easy to judge ourselves when we notice how much negative thinking we're doing. So here's some powerful advice for you. Don't do that. (laughs) Remember that it's perfectly normal. It's not really helpful, but it's a normal human brain at work. So no self-judgment about negative thinking is allowed. Just You just want to notice what your brain is doing. If you start judging yourself, then you're going to just tell your brain to focus on a new thought, like I'm a negative thinker and your brain's going to find evidence for that too, (laughs) right? So your brain's always going to just find evidence to prove what you tell it is true, okay? And always just remember that you're not one thing or another, you're everything, you're all of it. Sometimes you're lazy, sometimes you're motivated, sometimes you're um, enthusiastic, sometimes you're not, you know? So everybody's all of it. Sometimes you're depressed, sometimes you're happy. Everybody's all of it. So um, your brain will just focus on whatever you tell it to focus on. Now, here's another hint. When you discover that you're eating something that you didn't plan to eat, and eating off plan is called buffering, we're using food or alcohol as a distraction so that we don't have to feel our negative emotions, and that's called buffering. So when you're buffering, this is an excellent opportunity to do some work. What negative emotion might you be trying to avoid? And then go deeper. What thought is causing that negative emotion? Because remember that your thoughts create emotion and emotion drives behavior. If you're buffering, the root cause of your buffering is a thought error. And you need to figure out what that thought is so that you can notice it and correct it. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yeah. Sometimes you need to do a thought download. So what that means is you just write everything down on a piece of paper, a thought download. Just write it all down. And once thoughts are on a piece of paper, and I like to just take it line by line, write write one thought on one line and another thought on another line, and just write all these thoughts down. And you can look at them objectively. And this is like a different part of your brain that's going to look at your thinking. You're going to find all kinds of thoughts that are driving your negative emotion. You might have a thought, I'm not competent, or I'm not good enough, or I should do this, or I shouldn't do that. Remember, I talked in a previous podcast that I've got a lot of, I have to thoughts, right? Remember that? (laughs) I have to do this. I have to do that. Whatever it is, you're buffering is your clue that you have some thought investigation to do. Does that make sense? Just so then what you're saying is that um, the more you work on this and do some thought modification, the Mm -hmm. less you're probably going to want to buffer? Yeah. One of the secrets to lasting weight loss. (laughs) Find a root cause. People. (laughs) Huh? <laughs> so this is more than just food choices. People. Yes. This is yep. deep. <laughs> yep. One of the secrets to lasting weight loss is to stop buffering and uh, learn how to manage your emotions without food and figure out what kinds of thoughts you're thinking that you don't even know you're thinking. Um, a lot of us, like like that whole example of somebody, you know, with a lazy coworker, A lot of us have a lot of people in our lives that, you know, we just have negative thoughts about and we just expect negative things from them. And, you know, we think they trained us to think like this. (laughs) But the truth is, we trained our brains to think like this. So, not everybody in the world sees the same thing in any other person. So, there might be somebody that sees this person that you think is so awful and absolutely loves and adores them because they have different thoughts about them. So it totally depends on what you're thinking and what instructions you're giving your brain 
to filter out out of all the things that your brain can can notice in the world. Your brain can only notice a few things, and so you're giving it instructions all the time. So what instructions are you giving your brain to think about? And that is what your beliefs are. Your beliefs are basically instructions for what to notice about the world. And if you're noticing things that are causing you to feel negative emotion that you don't want to feel anymore, then what you can do is go back and ask yourself, well, do I want to really, do I really want to keep thinking this thought? Do I really want to keep thinking that my coworker's lazy when it causes me this much problem? Like maybe she's not as lazy as I think she is. Maybe there's more to her, right? So, right. so this is how we evolve. This is how we grow. And again, this is why I love the weight loss journey. And I love going deep on the weight loss journey and getting the food out of the way so that we can really understand what's happening in our brain. It's awesome. Yeah, this is good stuff. But if you're saying that, <laughs> that you uh, want us to you know, do a thought download and start writing stuff down. If you see me carrying around a notebook at work yeah, <laughs> from here on out, because <laughs> I'm probably going to have to do a lot of writing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's a great that's, idea. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's a lot of thought because um, I have a lot of negative thoughts throughout the day that I don't realize probably I even have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, everybody does. It's so normal. Everybody does. So, you know, we help you with all of this in the membership. We're here for you. And if you want help, join our Empowered Weight Loss Membership. It starts with the 30-day Done With Dieting Boot Camp. And we, I teach you everything that I teach our patients in terms of what to eat, how to eat, how to think about your weight loss, how to let go of dieting. Remember, it's called Done With Dieting. So, how to let go of all of that dieting craziness and start learning how to eat properly, how to fuel your body properly. And then we help you when you notice that you're eating things that actually aren't all that good for you. And then we help you figure out what are you thinking. And it's just, it's just such, such a transformative journey. So I would encourage you head over to journeybeyondweightloss.com and sign up and we will see you all in the membership. Okay. You have any other comments, Marshall? I was going to say, do yourself a favor, sign up, <laughs> sign up, give yourself yeah. a chance to, uh, to change your life. Exactly. I'm, I mean, and it's, I'm, I'm going to do it again. This, this mm-hmm. session. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need to do it more than once. Cause I'm, stubborn. Oh yeah, <laughs> we all do. We all do. All right. Well, take care everyone. And we will see you next week. Bye now. All right. Bye everybody. Hey, if you really want to lose weight and keep it off for good, your next step is to sign up for Dr. Angela's free weight loss course, where you're going to learn everything you need to get started on your weight loss journey the right way. Just head over to journeybeyondweightloss.com slash free course to sign up. Also, it would be awesome if you could take a few moments and write a review on iTunes. Thanks, and we'll see you in Journey Beyond Weight Loss.